Hey folks, welcome back to Good Enough Customs. So, it's finally back to the K5. So, yeah, we've been off this truck for a couple months and, uh, you know, it's probably a good thing for me. I, I was starting to get into it with this tail pan. I was enjoying that, but then, you know, getting started on old Harvey Dent, that one kind of took precedent because, you know, uh, Jackson turning 16, needing something to drive, uh, letting him do, you know, teenager things. So, uh, so we kind of put the K5 on the back burner uh, while we focused on Harvey. Spent five weeks, four weeks? I think it's four weeks. I can't remember exactly. Spent a little bit of time, about a month, um, getting that truck done, you know, nights, weekends, uh, all that fun stuff. So, uh, Jackson's been driving it now for a couple weeks and, uh, the truck is doing excellent. Um, I'm still pretty thrilled that we got that thing done for right around two grand. Uh, actually one thing that I did remember well after the video got edited and uploaded and all that. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to go back through and fix all that <laughs> is the total price was actually off by a hundred dollars. So we actually did go over $2,000 by 40 bucks. Um, I forgot to add in the tire mountain balance. Um, that one I paid cash on it, I believe. I don't remember, I didn't have a receipt for it. And then uh, I was sitting there going back over in my head going, God, it seems like I'm missing something. And yeah, I was missing a hundred dollars. So 2,040 bucks, you know, whatever, <laughs> 40 bucks, um, you know, 40 bucks, whatever, you know. So. Still, two grand, pretty awesome. I'm still pretty tickled that we got that thing done for, you know, 2K. So, uh, next on the list for that one is going to be lowering kit. We still got to get it to an alignment shop. Um, he was telling me that it pulls to the right, I think, uh, pretty good. So, uh, so we still got to get it to an alignment shop, you know, the old shop alignment. That's just a, that's just a get you by. So, uh, still got to get to an alignment shop. So it doesn't chew them tires up. Um, but we'll probably wait and do that till after we lower it. Uh, which will probably be sometime next month. Maybe. <laughs> Depends on if I get going on a tear on this guy. And uh, Lord knows I need to. So, where we left off. Um, if you remember back, we had some pretty rotten metal back here on the tail pan. Actually, it's still sitting on the ground right there. <laughs> I for real just went, all right, moving to something else. I still had tools laid over here. I still got crap every, I just literally how I, how I stopped was how it was left. Um, I just put the tools up like five minutes ago. So <laughs> this is crazy. Anyhow, um, so yeah, so this tail pan was really, really bad up here. Uh, rotted pretty bad over in this area. Uh, this area, about the same, actually a little bit worse. And when I was trying to get, I can't remember what I was trying. Oh yeah, whenever I was prying this piece up to give me a little access hole into here, uh, this thing bent like it was just made out of wet paper. So uh, so I've been thinking on this guy. And I've been thinking on this guy for a hot minute. I know I've pointed this out a few times, but uh, it's got, uh, I'm gonna cut it basically right along this line here. Um, just cut it over. This thing extends all the way back. I don't know if you can see that. I don't have a light on me over here, but. It extends all the way back over there. And it's got this little dimple dyed, um, it's got this little dimple dyed hole all the way around it. So that's that's kind of been throwing me off because I'm like, I don't I don't have dimple dye stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it here and just come across and cut down into this, you know, hole. Um, then over here, I'm just gonna take it all the way back to the seam and then take it up. Now, I was looking at this just a minute ago and this actually never touches. This is just seam sealed up and that's it. So we got this giant glob of seam seal right here. I got to knock out and we're pretty much going to take it. We may go ahead all the way down here and just extend this line on back. And we're going to cut this guy up and then cut him on over as best we can to get this whole section out. Now thinking on that and not having dimple dye stuff, I'm sitting there going, I was like, man, there's gotta be a way to reinforce this. I've, I've thought about double stacking. Um, double stacking is this is 16 gauge. Yeah, this is 16 gauge uh, metal for back here. So I thought about double stacking it. Um, yeah, that'd probably work okay. But then I was like, well, you know what? I've got 
excuse the mess, but I've got a shop press right there. And I have many, many different sizes of sockets. I wonder if I can kind of redneck engineer a old socket temple die, maybe? I don't know. We may give it a shot. Take a scrap piece of metal and give it a shot. So, I don't know. We'll see if that works. <laughs> So anyhow, so that's what we're going to try and do today is uh, get in here, get this piece cut out, get a uh, um, get some cardboard, make a little template for us. So that way we can get that, you know, cut out and ready to go and then uh, get the new metal cut, bent, done, ready to go and go ahead and, you know, buzz it in. Um, and if we got enough time, we'll get in here and you can kind of see the butchery that I created when I was going at this with the... Uh, with the air chisel, yeah, it's it's pretty bad, <laughs> and I really don't want to take that. Uh, I really don't want to take that wheel well out if I don't have to, because that seems to be a very involved process. Um, I've got all the screws out; it should come out, but I think there's seam seal and some adhesive stuff, and uh, she don't want to budge. So I think what I'm going to do is get in here with a hammer and dolly and just kind of beat this guy straight ish you know i mean this you know this whole piece is just separated kind of get this guy beat down straight ish um and then some of these holes will be just fine but i, I got a lot of splits in the metal so hammer it out and try to clean it up a little bit um maybe not completely welding all the holes up because as one viewer pointed out <laughs> <laughs> when I ran into him at uh, C10 Nationals, he's like, he goes, yeah, just leave the holes, man. That's your, that's your plug weld for the next piece. I was just like, damn it. Why don't I think of that? <laughs> so, uh, I don't remember your name, but I remember you had a really cool truck <laughs> and that's the way it goes with car guys. I don't know his name, but he drives a, you know, 67 to 72 Chevy short bed. It's an all original 50,000 mile truck. That originally came with an inline six that he put a 350 in and it's uh it's freaking sweet so <laughs> so i remember your truck i just don't remember your name and don't please don't take offense to that because i there's a lot of people that i'm like oh yeah the 73 snapper okay yeah you okay you know that type of stuff so uh so anyways so that's where we are that's what we're gonna try to do today um i guess uh i'm gonna get some tools drug out and kind of figure out more of a game plan here and get to it so now time to go cutting on this so i think i'm going to change the way i was going to do this i was going to take this side at an angle but i think just for ease i think i'm just going to cut all the way to here so go ahead and extend this line over and come on up right here and basically do the same thing on this other side that should capture all that really bad metal and get us pretty close to where we need to be so i think that's what i'm i think that's what i'm going to do so let me get my eyes and ears on and uh, we'll get the grinder turned loose on this here in just a second. I tell you, this cut back here is a pain because you're just catching sparks right in the face. All right, so trying to cut back in here. I, there's no, I don't have anything I can get in there with, um, as in a, a cutoff wheel or anything like that. So I figured the best thing to do is uh, use a sawzall with a very long blade. Um, and uh, also I'm thinking about it. Big shout out to my buddy, Ted. Um, he said he upgraded the 20 volt DeWalt stuff. And he's like, I don't need all this 18 volt stuff sitting around, so. You want it, you can have it. And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so thanks, Ted. Getting some good use out of this stuff. So anyhow, let's get this thing threaded in here maybe and see about getting some cutting done. I'm probably gonna destroy a blade or two. <laughs>
Probably should have put my earplugs in. <laughs> All right, now let's see if I can get this side to cut. And then we'll worry about making them meet up here in just a minute. All right. Yeah, that metal, metal got a little thin. You can see how thin it got right there where the, uh, where it's just rusted down. So, yep, good thing I'm replacing that. Well, now the metal that's already back in here, this is actually not too bad. Um, so, good news is I don't have to worry about trying to figure out some sort of redneck way to do uh, a dimple die. So, it looks like all I really got to do here is just kind of clean my edges up and uh, go ahead and get, uh, I guess, get started on making a little cardboard template for this. So, uh, I'll get these edges cleaned up and get a template started here in just a second. So that's cleaned up uh, about as good as it's going to get. Um, try to straighten this guy out just a little bit. But that's straightened up. I mean, uh, that's cleaned up about as good as she's going to go. Um, yeah, it may be a little ugly back in there, but it's back in there. And then this will be folded back down over top of it and you'll never see it. So not too worried about how pretty that looks. Now, it isn't a straight across shot because I didn't really line this up. <laughs> so so this cut from this direction, it actually, uh, well, let's see. Maybe I can snake the camera around here for a second. So you can kind of see right in here where it kind of juts, you know, back in and out. I'm just gonna leave that. I'm not too worried about it. Like I said, this is all gonna be covered up by this guy. So uh, so whenever I go to cutting my, my piece of cardboard out for my template, I'll just make sure that it's, you know, it matches that. So, all right, time to find some cardboard that I can use to cut to do this. So I'll be right back. Alrighty. So found a uh, old Scott, or uh, yeah, Scott shop towels. Yeah, found one of these boxes floating around. So this guy should be what I need, you know. So lengthwise, it's there-ish. And then uh, it may be a little long for now, but we'll mark that up. So since I've got this weird cut here, I'm gonna make sure and leave this end a little long, and then I can get the trimming and doing on that side when it comes to it. And get all my stuff sorted out here. So we'll go ahead. And we're going to set Go ahead and set, whoop, ah, trying to run away on me. So I already know I'm going to need another quarter inch off of that for the uh, end there. So you can see I'm not that good at cutting straight. <laughs> so, so we got our rough side, uh, our rough size for this. So I'm actually going to cut on the outside edge of this line, all the way around, except for down here. I'm going to go another quarter inch over. Actually, I'll probably go a half inch. Let's just do a half inch. There. That'll give me a little extra length on this end over here because I have that uh, that weird little cut that I gotta make. I'm gonna cut this back in a little wider too um, until I can verify everything is the right size. So 
So if I line that up and line this up, they should be pretty doggone close. And it looks like they are. Any uh, unforeseen gaps or anything like that, I'll just stitch up with the welder. So no big deal there. I ain't afraid to jump a gap with that thing. All right, so we have got a gap here of something, but I can't tell what it is because all my numbers marked off. So I put this at two. Basically two and seven eighths is where we're coming up for our bend. Well, one and seven eighths, I'm sorry. I said two. It's actually just seven eighths of an inch. Is really frustrating because all the numbers are rubbed off of this thing so i can't i can't make odds or ends of it I, I need to go get another tape measure this one sucks all right so let's start over there all right so here we're going to measure out what our height is and this measures to seven eighths so we got seven eighths of an inch of height Okay, and then this side, ah, it's in that little, that little cubby here and it's hard as hell to get a line on it. Let's do this way. We are at Seven eighths. Huh. So both ends are about seven eighths high. <laughs> but there's a little wobble in the middle of it. So so we got our two sides. I'm gonna take this over to uh over to the bench and uh actually use the metal brake just to set this in there so I get a nice crisp clean line across that. So then I can go ahead and start getting this side done. Um so I'll be right back. Alright, we got <clears throat> got our bend in there so now I can come in here I'm gonna go from underneath hopefully I can mark my line across there so I can mark my line across here so I know my length Be nice if this didn't have this crease in the middle it kind of throws me off all right so gotta mark my bends which will be right there and right there so i'm gonna run back over and bend that and then we'll get this thing laid down and i'll trace the uh the other side of this So, got this guy kind of where he needs to be, and I just got to go and mark the other side. Not 100% sure how I'm going to do that. Get a little creative, I suppose. Yeah, we can do it like that. Just match him up, and I should be able to get in there and mark that.
All right, so we should have a patch panel now. Made out of cardboard. But we can take it and transfer this over to metal and be in good shape. So it looks like we got a little trimming to do on this back end and the front end. I'm a little tall. Back over here, so let me turn that down just a smidge. All right, so I'm happy enough with that. So now I'm gonna get over here and I'm gonna draw or you know trace out this weird little edge that we got here. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I think that'll work okay. Still a little high right here, I think. Yep. I can work with this. So, patch panel made out of cardboard. So I guess I'm gonna go over here and set up my saw horses and uh, a piece of plywood so I can get this cut out of some 16 gauge. So I'll catch back up with you over there. So I took my template, just kind of laid it out on a piece of uh, 16 gauge. Um, clamped it down so it don't float around and move on me. So, uh, uh, so that way I can go and get my, my general shape done. And we'll do some fine tuning once, uh, once the piece is pretty well cut out. Go back and do some fine tuning on it and clean it up and make sure she lays in there nice and straight. Straight-ish. So there's my general shape. Now the fun-filled task of uh, cutting this out. So we got the general shape down. I'll take the cutoff wheel on this. Actually, I don't use my plasma cutter often, but I think I will on this one. So I think I'm gonna hit this with the plasma. So let me get that stuff drug out. And we're gonna cut this off the side back here. So I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Yeah, I am not the best at cutting straight lines, especially with plasma, but that is a hell of a lot faster and a lot less messy than it is doing it with the uh, cutoff wheel. So what we'll do from here is, uh, of course, got to clean the edges up, but I did try to stay outside my lines so I can grind these guys down to the line and uh, keep it cleaned up that way. So, huh. all right. I guess moving on, we'll be uh, back in just a sec. Now we just gotta let that cool off so I can actually touch it. And uh, then we'll go bend her up and start test fitting. All right, got this guy loaded up in the metal brake. Now, if you remember, this metal brake is not really designed for 16 gauge. It says max gauge. I think it said 17. It might've said 18. I don't remember. 
I was able to bend the other ones. Um, I didn't like it a whole lot, but it did do it. Um, so go ahead and get this guy bent uh, for this side, and then I'll flip it and we'll get the other side of it bent. And we'll be ready to go. That's seriously, it just slid. Oh, you piece of shit. Can't expect a whole lot for 50 bucks. Okay. I gotta try to make this somewhat right. Hopefully this didn't ruin the bend. Yeah. But we'll find out. All right, well, there it is. I, pro I think I bent this in just a little too much. Actually, I know I did. So I'm going to take uh, pliers and just kind of walk it back out a little bit. Um, actually, I think I can bang it out right here. Handy dandy body hammer. I really need a better spot. That's better. So I should have gotten that little pinch out of it. It might still be a little pinched, but uh, if need be, I'll actually I'll go ahead and ding, ding on it a couple more times. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, head back over to the truck. All right, so slid the patch panel in. We are good on our width. We're just we're just a smidge too tall over here, probably sixteenth of an inch. Basically, the thickness of this metal is uh, we're just a little tall. We're a little tall on this side as well, and we got a little bit of an overhang. So we got to trim a little bit up there. Need to knock a little bit down here. So we're gonna take. And just kind of feather that area out a little bit and we're going to feather this area out a little bit and we're probably going to take just a little bit off the edge these lines right here are not how far in i'm going to take it i'm just this is the way i know where to just knock a little bit out um let's see looks like we got this section, that section, there, there, and that looks like I need to take just a little bit off that front edge. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna take some off this front edge. I'm not gonna worry about taking some off this back edge. Well, I'm gonna take a little bit off there, but uh, I kind of want to take more of the, this edge off and make this fit really good and tight. This side, I'm not too worried about it. It's a pretty straight shot. So uh, 
Uh, so I'll get this back over here, grind on a little bit, cut her down just a smidge, and uh, come back and test fit. All right, let's see what it'll look like now. Still a little high. Oh no, we got too much hanging over here on the back side. Okay. And that's pretty much the name of the game. Back and forth, test fit, grind some, test fit, grind some, test fit, grind some. Alrighty. Now let's see where we at. It's very, very tight in a couple spots. Okay. This side is looking pretty good. So I've still got a few spots on this inside lip that are uh, giving me some grief. So uh, yeah, once again, go do some grinding. All right, that is pretty doggone close. All right, so uh, that guy's fitted in there. Um, that's pretty doggone close. Uh, it'll probably take a little, basically just sticking a couple tacks throughout just to get it kind of held. And uh, once I get the tacks in there, like this back edge is wanting to, you know, pop up. And I'm wondering if that's from where it slipped in the metal brake. Um, kind of tweaked it a little bit, probably. Maybe not, I don't know. Um, but basically, I can tack it along this bottom edge and I can hammer this or I can tack it back over here tack here push this down and tack this in so he's nice and tight because he's not up by much and i can just flex it down and it levels out really easy so that's pretty doggone close so i'm going to run with this so now all we got to do is just get everything prepped up and ready and uh we'll start uh start hitting this guy with some welds. start hitting this guy with some welds and uh making it uh making it permanent so so i guess i'm gonna go get the welder drug out Get everything set up over here, and I guess I'll be back in a minute. All right, let's throw some tacks. I don't know what's going on here. This is caving. So basically I'm just going to fill, go ahead and do the welding on this guy and just try to, you know, clean it up best I can. This will be underneath the bed floor. So it doesn't have to be super pretty. Um, my outside edge is a little wobbly, but uh, may have to beat on it a little bit with a hammer and get her straightened up a little bit. But, uh, I guess now it's just uh, get through and get her stitched up. So here we go. Well, she's a little warm, so I'm gonna let that sit and cool for just a little bit, and uh, I'll come back in and hit some more hit some more spots on it, and maybe work on the other side. I learned my lesson last time by not sticking my arm over top of it. You can still see my scar from where I burned it on the other side. So, anyhow, this is uh, very warm, so uh, that needs to cool off for a good little bit, and I'll be back shortly. Alrighty, so we are cooled down good and good.
good and cold now. And uh, I guess I'm gonna try to do some more, uh, some more stitching. Well, alrighty, so I got the uh, I got this patch panel welded in. Uh, it has cooled off to where I can actually touch it now, which is great. Um, it welded in pretty nice. Here, it uh, it kind of dipped on me a little bit, so I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of lay a bead or two over here and just build this area up a little bit, and then that way when I grind it, it'll be fairly smooth and flat, so we don't have a little valley here for moisture and crap to set in. But uh, back in here. It was a little bit of a chore back in here. I couldn't get that metal super, super clean. Um, it, it was clean enough to where it actually did hold a weld, but uh, in trying to do that, I blew a few holes um, where it thinned the metal out pretty good. So blew a few holes. I had to sit there and just keep stacking off of the previous weld to build up the hole and jump the gaps. So I got that done. I uh, got the inside of it welded up. That's a chore because I'm too big to fit in this area, so I got to come from over top and weld down. And I'm a big guy. That's not super easy to do. <laughs> so that's going to wrap it up for this one. Uh, unfortunately, I have on call duty this week, so uh, uh, depending on how the week goes, I may not have any time to get out here and work on the blazer <laughs> and do finish up what I started tonight. Um, so hopefully I do, and if I do, then you know. Y'all will not be seeing this. <laughs> but if, if I don't, then this will be the end of the video. So so anyways, I do appreciate y'all guys watching. Uh, if you haven't liked the video, hit the like button. Um, if you haven't subscribed and you made it this far, hit the subscribe button. Uh, doesn't, doesn't hurt nothing. Only helps. So, <laughs> But I do appreciate each and every one of you guys and gals that are watching. And I uh, look forward to seeing y'all next week. So... Uh, Till then, just remember, it ain't got to be perfect, just good enough. We'll holler at y'all later.